back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you a little bit about my heckle bassoon. Now my heckle bassoon has been doing a lot of adjusting and shifting and most recently the pitch has shifted so that my reeds needed to be three millimeters in overall length longer than they had when I first received the bassoon from the overhaul. So let's go ahead and dig into what happened, why, how, and um, don't worry, the story does have a happy ending. My Huggle Bassoon had a complete restoration. I have a video on that. I also have a video done on the fact that my Huckle Bassoon has an extra long, long joint uh, with Chad Taylor. And I will go ahead and link to that video as well so you can catch up on some of the intricacies about my Heckle Bassoon as I take you through this next journey that has been part of the evolution of my Heckle. Okay, so my Heckle Bassoon, right around the start of the year, I noticed that the pitch was shifting. Now I'm very lucky because I was doing a lot of live performances of Aaron Off Down of the Box and I had a lot of video recordings as well as audio recordings and I could tell from those audio recordings that the pitch wasn't sitting where it had normally been sitting and that I could see in my body that I was holding my body differently in order to get the pitch the way that I wanted it to. Now, I am a firm believer that your bassoon, your vocal, your reed setup, that makes half the sound, but your physical body makes the other half the sound. So I do like to watch a lot of videos of my performances to see where I'm holding and then where I'm not holding and then how that can be affecting the sound. But I noticed from all of those live recordings, as well as recordings from my second album, which I have been secretly working on, that I could hear that the pitch wasn't sitting where it normally was and that I needed to make longer reads to hit a 440. I kept making longer and longer and longer reads as the year went on and then I was like, okay, how far are we gonna go? This is, this is starting to get a little bit much. I thought that there was a possibility that my body was holding tension, so I went and I got a whole bunch of massages, which that was fantastic, but that was not what the problem was. The problem was that my bassoon was shifting in pitch. Now, I also noticed as the year went on that I had problems with response. It wasn't as easy as I had experienced in the past. And also decrescendos down to pianissimo. Those were not, they weren't there. They weren't there like they were before. So I contacted Chad Taylor. I contacted Shane Wheeler, who did the original restoration on it. And I also contacted Ken Potsick. Contacting all three of them, each one of them gave me a really hard time about how long it had been since I had had any work done on my bassoon because, you know, you should keep up on those things. Mm. Yeah, I had, I hadn't been up on that like I should have. So each of them said, you need to get your bassoon looked at. And not only that, but then they can offer more insight about the experiences that I was having and then how to fix them. I opted to go with Ken Potsick largely because Ken Potsick lives close enough that it wasn't too far away where I was gonna have to ship my bassoon. So I uh, made my appointment, went over, and we immediately started checking my bassoon for leaks. The way he checks my bassoon for leaks is with a magnahelic machine. He took all of the keys off and then stopped up each of the little tone holes. Then he add a little bit of water with suds in it around each of the tone holes. And if it bubbles, it bubbles because air is seeping out of those tone holes. Let me just say that my entire wing joint and my boot joint was like a bubble factory. So let's talk about why my bassoon was leaking so drastically. First off, it had been way too long since I had been to see a bassoon repair technician. The second reason is because my bassoon has a lot of liners in it, metal tubes in each of the tone holes. Now, some of the tone holes, it's very standard to have them lined, others not so standard. My entire bassoon is lined. We're talking even the long joint is lined. The long joint never gets moisture in it like the boot or the wing joint. Tone holes underneath the B flat key. Even that is lined. Now, Ken Potzik had great insight as to why this is. He had mentioned that Manny Ziegler had gotten a hold of my bassoon or had influence on the person who owned my bassoon. Manny Ziegler was not only in the New York Philharmonic, but he was a firm believer in lining the tone holes of the bassoon, like lining everything. And I have to say that everything on my bassoon is lined and my bassoon also came out of New York State. So it all makes 
sense now. You're going to have humidity, and humidity is going to make the bassoon expand, and then it's going to contract. So when it's more humid, it expands, and then when it's less humid, it contracts. Now this is all happening around a metal tube, and that metal tube does not flex or shift. So as it expands and contracts, it's got this metal tube in it that can make my bassoon leak. Now, my bassoon was not only leaking from the tone holes, but also many of the pads had just worn out over time. So Ken Potsick by hand made all of the replacement pads while I was sitting there for my bassoon. He even has an older collection of pads that he has taken off of other Heckle bassoons. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about the intonation. The intonation on the bassoon has shifted not due so much to the leaking as to the fact that my bassoon has finally played in. My bassoon was part of an estate sale, and as part of an estate sale, it had not been played for the several years before it was sold. So then once I got it, we did the restoration. Once you do that much of a restoration, you have to re-break the instrument in. And as I was breaking the instrument in, I'm playing it so much. Now, as I'm playing it so much, the wood is shifting with the vibrations of my air that's going through it as it's vibrating the pitch of the instrument shifted with that. Every bassoon repair technician that I've spoken to says that bassoons are living, breathing things, just like the trees, because they are made of trees that are outside. So once you make it into a bassoon, it will still be a living, breathing entity. Now, some bassoons have the capacity to shift more than others. Heckles are known for being extremely flexible. This is in part why they have the tone colors that are available to them, but with that means that they also have the ability to shift. Now I've had the initial visit with Ken Potsick and um, I do have an appointment to go back later this month so that we can do more work on making sure the rest of the instrument seals but also do a bit of voicing to make sure that we can keep me at A440. Now the bonus of this is that when I originally had my bassoon the reeds had to be so much shorter than my Puchner bassoons. So I had to make reeds specifically for my Heckle bassoon that were separate. Now because the Heckle bassoon has shifted it's like a dream come true. I can use the reeds that I use on my heckle bassoon the same as my Puchner bassoon. They work for both. So I wanted to share with you guys the update on why I have not been on YouTube. It's because I needed to sort out some of the things that were happening in my world on my instrument. I hope that you enjoy that I am back. I have tons of video ideas and I will be coming at you regularly from here on out. If you enjoyed keeping up on this adventure with my heckle bassoon, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye!